tack it and then glitter onto the tack it. <sighs> hey everybody, looks into swirl here. New day, new tumbler project. Actually, four tumblers today. <laughs> this is gonna be quite the undertaking. We are fast approaching Halloween. And because Halloween tends to be a time when glow-in-the-dark cups are a little more popular than the rest of the year, I wanted to address a, a request I had recently, which was to show different ways to get a glow tumbler. So that's what we're going to be working on today. We're going to look at four different ways, four, we're going to look at four different ways to achieve a glow-in-the-dark tumbler, and then we're going to put graphics on it, and then final layer of resin, and then I'll show you all four in the dark, hopefully. I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna do that yet, but I'll worry about that when I get to the editing part. <laughs> Future Cindy can worry about that. So here are the four cups, and I'm not saying these are the only four ways to achieve a glow-in-the-dark tumbler. I, I'm sure there are lots of other ways. I don't wanna make this a really long video. I just figured these might be the four most, maybe not most popular ways, but the four easiest ways or the four ways that people would have the materials to do. I will list all of the materials I use in this video down in the description area below the title of this video. And if you can't find it there, please ask in the comment section. Here's what we're doing. We are starting with four 20 ounce skinny straight tumblers. These all happen to be from the Stainless Depot but Makerflow has these, a lot of other companies have these. This is just where I happen to get, these are hog brand tumblers this time. This is a glow in the dark tumbler to begin with. They come ready for sublimation and in the sublimation layer that's already on the tumbler is a glow in the dark effect. So this tumbler is ready to go right now. This will glow in the dark right now. For the purposes of this video, I am going to go with a green glow for all of these. So this is one of the Stainless Depot's green glow in the dark tumblers. They also have blue glow in the dark tumblers. They also have red glow in the dark tumblers. Like I said, I'm gonna try and compare like to like. So I'm gonna go green glow with all of these. So this one's ready to go until we get to the the part where we put on the graphics. So I'm just going to put this one aside. And these three are going to take a few more steps. We're going to have to put the glow onto them and then the graphic. So I sanded them, washed them, spray painted them with Rust-Oleum 2X matte white paint. I am going to take one of them and we're going to go out on the deck and I'm going to spray it with three layers of Rust-Oleum glow in the dark paint. This is the paint I prefer to use. There are other glow in the dark paints available. I'm sure your local Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot may have some other brand and that's fine. This is just the one I use. In fact, I I didn't, I, I usually get these at Walmart, the Rust-Oleum brand, but this particular can I think that I'll be using today, I got at Target of all places. And then these two are going to get glow in the dark powder and they're going to get the powder on them in two different ways. Normally I would mix the glow powder in with resin and then put that on as a, an initial layer of resin and then put the graphic over that. So that's gonna be one of them. And then the other one, I thought, well, I have never tried this, but it should work, and that is the Tacket Method. So I'm gonna paint this one with Aline's Tacket over and over, mixed with a little water. And when it dries, 15, 20 minutes, it will remain very tacky. And instead of doing the Tacket Method with glitter, which is what people usually do, or mica powder, which is what I've done in the past, we're going to apply glow in the dark powder and that should get us a layer of glow on here and then put resin over that. Okay, this one is going to be the Aline's Tacket over and over method to get glow powder on here. I will show you the glow powder I am going to use for both of the glow powder tumblers. This glows green. It looks white until it's either charged in the sunshine or hit with a UV light and then it glows green. Let's see if I can demonstrate for you. Hopefully you'll be able to see this a little bit. Sort of, sort of shows as green here in the bag. Maybe you can see it, maybe I'll, I won't know till I edit. <laughs> so I got this off of AliExpress. I will try to link to this below. It was a while ago. If you go to AliExpress and you search for green glow in the dark powder, you will find a whole bunch of opportunities. I like the fact that I got as much as I did. If you wanted to buy from a US source, Glitter Chimp has glow powders. This is already green to start, really glows green in the dark. And here is a blue example from uh, Woody's Goodies. Solar Color Dust Company has glow in the dark powders. Amazon has 
glow powders. So you can find them all over the place. Uh, the reason I got this request is somebody had some glow powder around and she wanted to know how to utilize it instead of the spray paint or the sublimation already glow tumblers. I am going to put one of these off to the side. This will get the glow powder mixed in resin applied to it. And this one, we are going to try and put the glow powder onto the cup with the tacket method. So this is Aline's Tacket over and over. You get this off of Amazon usually, although I think Michael's and Hobby Lobby and all those places have it as well. I'm just gonna squirt some in there. Add a little bit of water. I don't necessarily make it 50-50. I know some people say it's gotta be 50-50 or it's gotta be 75-25 or whatever. I just, just eyeball it. The whole reason for diluting it with water is to make it easier to get a smooth, even layer on your tumbler. All right, so that's one layer. I'm gonna wait about 15 minutes and then come back and apply a second layer. I won't make you watch that. And then I will bring you back when both layers are dry but very tacky and we will apply the glow powder. And we're back. Okay, we have our tumbler that has two layers of Aline's Tacket over and over, mixed with water and applied to the tumbler. They both, both layers have dried. You can't really tell because it's a white cup. If this were any other color, it goes on white and it dries clear. So now, like we do with glitter for the Tacket Method, I am going to put this on and then we're going to see what we get. Okay, this will make it easier for you to see the white powder on the white cup or, or what falls off the white cup. So here we go, Tacket Method with glow powder. Never done this before. It's a little crunchy, a little chunky, that's okay. Could you do this with Mod Podge or some other glue? Yes, of course you could. No reason you couldn't. I'm just doing the Tacket method because it's a method I kind of like and I'm familiar with. I'm gonna go over it one more time. Basically, I'm looking for any place that still looks a little shiny. The point of burnishing glitter after you apply with the Tacket method is to get it to lie flat. I don't need to make it lie flat, it's on there. Basically, I'm just tapping off any excess. And now I'm gonna take it outside and I am gonna spray it very gently, probably standing back a ways with some clear. Okay, we're back. This is the tumbler that has to date only been spray painted white. It hasn't had any glow powder added to it in any way. We are gonna add our glow powder into the resin that I'm going to apply. It's a 20 ounce skinny straight, so I'm gonna mix up 20 milliliters of resin, mix a bunch of glow powder into that. I am not gonna use an accurate measurement. I'm just gonna put a bunch in until I'm comfortable with the amount. I'm gonna air more towards more than less because I wanna get as good a coverage as I can. There is a rule with resin that you need to make sure you're below 10% of the amount of resin of an additive, and that holds true for liquids, but I'm gonna be using a dry powder, so I can pretty much mix in as much as I want. Obviously, I, I still wanna be able to smoothly apply it on and not have it be all crunchy, so I'm not gonna add like twice as much as there is resin or anything like that, but I'm gonna get a good amount in here because I wanna get a good glow on the tumbler. Here we go, sit back and enjoy the show. Okay, so we have our four tumblers. Everybody has some sort of glow in it or on it. 
and a coat of resin over that. So we are basically at a level playing field here now where I'm going to put a full wrap water slide onto each one. You're not going to have to watch me do all four because that would that would just be ridiculous. <laughs> if something really good happens, as in I screw something up along the way, I will show that part, of course, because that's more interesting to watch. But I'll do one and then I will let them sit overnight and then I'll put resin on them and then they will basically be done and it'll be time for sunshine and a glow in the dark shots so you can see the differences and the similarities and etc. I'm going to put the same graphic on each one. So again, we're going to try and compare apples to apples here. And this is my graphic. I found this on Etsy. Surprise, surprise. It's very cute. It's called Halloween monster coffee or something like that. I'll link to it below, of course. This is my favorite Hippo, H-I-I-P-O-O -O, or Hippo water slide decal paper. And I'm gonna cut this down now so it wraps around these tumblers. I forgot to tell you that I spray each one of these water slide pages that I print out on my inkjet printer with uh, two layers of Rust-Oleum Gloss Clear Spray followed by a third layer that is the Plasti-Dip Glossifier. Uh, that is my preferred method. It doesn't mean you have to do it that way, but it does need to be sealed with something because otherwise the inkjet printer inks will run when you put it in water. Dip your squeegee in the water so it doesn't drag and then start working out all the bubbles and the water and wrinkles and whatnot. All right, this looks pretty good. I'm going to bend this under for now and deal with trying to trim it off when it's dry tomorrow. And I'm going to go through the rest of these. I will video record it, but like I say, if, if nothing dramatically awful happens, I won't show you any of that. That will mean it will have gone basically like this one did without too much drama. Okay, so here's where we are. We have four tumblers. They should all glow in the dark. And now they have a water slide on them. These have been drying overnight, so everybody's ready to go here. So I will finish these by putting a layer of KS Liquid Stone Ultra UV Epoxy Resin over the whole thing. I will put into it a little bit of 504 so they all sparkle. And then we'll be doing, hopefully, if future editor Cindy can figure this out, four of these out in the sunshine, and for these in complete darkness, you can see the different glows. Sunshine shot, here we come. Bye. 